Good morning, YouTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. It is February the 23rd, 2021. It is 9.45 here in West Michigan. It is a Tuesday morning. I didn't do a Monday Reads. I thought about it but I never got got the old engine running so um, my wife left this morning to do errands to get a haircut visit her sister-in-law and I thought I would just stop by and tell you what I've been reading what's on my mind today is a sunny day it's 40 degrees so we're getting towards spring. Uh, this morning I I got out last night, Systematic Theology by Robert Lethem. I had put this down the lower level, but I uh, last night I went to bed around, I went to bed early and then I got up and uh, I try to switch things when I'm reading. I don't like to just read one thing for a long period of time and I've been reading medieval spirituality for a while and uh, in the mornings for devotions now I, I really haven't been reading the last couple of days anything in the afternoons except um, I don't know what I've been reading I, mean, I have my I don't have my diary with me but I haven't really read my Thoreau biography or my book on Emerson lately I don't really know why, <laughs> but I have been reading, well, first of all, I got out the Systematic Theology by Robert Lethem, and I was reading on the revelation of God, and then I go into the Trinity, and the attributes of God, the doctrine of Scripture, creation, just basic, uh, I've been reading Systematic Theology for I say since 1975, at least 45 years. I've been a Christian 51 years. So yeah, I've been reading Systematic Theology for a long time. Reading the Bible. I've been reading through the Gospel of Matthew and Luke on the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, bet I usually read that. Last couple of days I've been really in the mood just to read that. And I've been reading... Um, This book, uh, In Search of Sacred Time, Jacob's, Jacobus de Vorain and the Golden Legend. Uh, this is just about the Golden Legend. I showed you, I had, I found this, I had it in our library. Selections of the Golden Legend by Jacob, Jacobus Vorain. He lived from 1229 to 1298. Uh... So this is selections, but I found online last night a complete uh, edition of the Golden Legend co covering the whole work, which is in some editions it's seven volumes, <laughs> and uh, I found a list of all the saints that are, he has little biographical sketches on, he has 182 I don't, know, I don't I don't know what you call it, 80, 82, 182 um, histories, biographies, little sketches of, of these different individuals, these saints. And so last night I was reading on the, the first one, St. Andrew the Apostle. I read that on that website. It's, it's put out by a Catholic. Catholic group and it's the whole golden legend so I was reading that last night and this only covers even little of the whole golden legends but I wanted to read it so I read that last night saved the website can read it really enjoying this book in sacred in search of sacred time Jacobus de Vorain and the golden legend by Jacques Jacques de Gaulle 
really enjoy, this is translated uh, French, I think, by uh, Lydia J. Lydia G. Corrine. So I was reading that. Reading the Psalms, the Book of Psalms. Reading the, uh, well, last, how I've been reading through the life of, of the Lord Jesus Christ is I've been reading, I've shown this, <laughs> I don't know how many times, The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 1, Volume 1, Chapters 1 through 40. I've read 345 pages. I'm on the mission and life of John the Baptist in this volume. So I read this, and I was reading uh, Isaac Ambrose yesterday, looking into Jesus. I've shown you that. I did get the third volume of Rudolph of Saxony, The Life of Jesus Christ. This is part one, volume two, chapters 41 to... Wait a minute here. No. Yeah. Wait a minute here. This is what I had this one already. This this is part one. And this is part one, chap volume two, chapters forty one to ninety two. This is chapters one through forty. The one I got in the mail was this one. I got this the other day. FedEx delivered it. This is the third volume. <laughs> it's the part two of the life of Jesus Christ, Rudolph of Saxony, volume one, chapters one through 57. And um, this is the first full English translation of this classic work. It is also the first edition in any language to identify the thousands of sources used by Rudolph, both those he quotes and the many he cites without attribution. So, this is, it says here in the preface of this third volume, we have reached the halfway point in L Rudolph's magma opus. The author himself divides his presentation in the life of Christ into two parts. The turning point in the narrative for him is Peter's confession of faith, which is followed by Christ's first prediction of his passion. The shift in Jesus' ministry from that of an itinerant teacher and healer in Galilee to the fulfillment of his mission in Jerusalem is the unscored most dramatically is underscored most dramatically in the Gospel of Luke. Quote, when the days drew near for him to be received up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. That's in Luke 9, verse 51. The Greek word means taking up and biblical scholars observe that it can refer to Christ going up to Jerusalem as being lifted up on the cross and, or his ascending to heaven. All of these themes are treated in part two of the life of Jesus Christ. So I don't know when I'll get to that, uh, but I really have been blessed in reading the first volume, part one, volume one, chapters one through 40. Uh, just meditating on the life of Jesus Christ, meditating, uh, just focusing, slowing down, lecto de via. Uh, yeah, I've just been really blessed in reading this. So I've been basically reading that and reading, I've, I read this yesterday, The Late Medieval Mysticism of the Low Countries. I was reading uh, The Evangelical Pearl, Part 3. So I've been reading that, and uh, like I said, I haven't really been reading any much else. Writing in my diary, this morning I'm on page 195, and uh, waiting for spring. I got out to uh, do my March 2021 diary, as you all know. When I come to this time in the, the month, I get my diary ready for the next month. We're, we're almost at the end of this month. M next Monday is the 1st of March. And I get my diary ready. 
Also this week, I, yesterday we finally got scheduled to have our uh, being vaccinated. So Thursday morning, my wife and I, we're going to get vaccinated here in Holland at the Civic Center. So then I, I'm going to use red for my color for the month of March 2021. So yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, the days, it's like my, I was telling my wife this morning, we just, the days just fly by. <laughs> it's like, it's just amazing how fast the time goes by. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. And which I'm thankful for because I want spring to come. Because I really love the change of seasons. So, March, that's what I do. I put that on each of the two folders. As you know, when I go through March 1 through 15, and then I go in the second folder, 16 to the end of the month. So, uh, also, we found out that we're going to be grandparents of another grandchild, number eight. And it's going to be a girl. So we have seven girls, granddaughters, and one grandson named Jack. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're going to be a grandparents of another girl. Of seven girls. So that's exciting. So, so now I have two folders. And I put that in here. In March, I have written down, my wife leaves on the 12th of March to go visit our daughter and her family there in Colorado. And she comes back on the 22nd of March. So I'll be left alone here. Well, I won't be alone. I'm always in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm surrounded by the army of God, the angelic host. Our oldest son and his Emily and Josie and Cora down the street. I'm sure they'll invite me over for dinner one of those nights when Carol's gone visiting our daughter Beth. Yeah, Beth just had her her fourth child, Nora Jean, who I think is 17 months old now, 17th months. She's really getting kind of big. Carol's all excited about going there and seeing them all next month. So yeah, I have my diary all in there. It's all ready. So yeah, not much else going on. Days go by quick. Watch of the birds, write in my diary, listen to music, mess with the computer, talk to my wife. I haven't really gone anywhere. My wife's going to go to Grand Rapids tomorrow which is about 25 minutes from where we live. She's going to go to Puritan Reformed Theological Seminary, their bookstore, to pick up material for her women's Bible study. And she's going to pick up some books that she wants from their bookstore and also some books that I want. I thought about going with her tomorrow, and I still might go, but I don't like going on a freeway, going 70 miles an hour. It kind of freaks me out. I kind of like just staying home, just uh, just drifting on the death flow. <laughs> Writing in my diary, reading my books, watching the birds, and trying to keep my eyes on Jesus as I go through my remaining days on this planet. <laughs> so yeah, as far as the Psalms, I'm on Psalm 17. And I'll read that before I close. Hear, hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer, that goeth out, goeth not out of framed lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence, let thy eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved my heart, thou hast visited me in the night, thou hast tried me, and shall find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings and thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. 
I have called unto thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thy ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou, that, that sit thou savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked thou oppress me, from the wicked thou that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. They have now compassed us. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, as it were a young lion lurking in secret, secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which, which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life, whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasures. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babies, to their babes. As for me, I will behold the, thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake at, with thy likeness. I like that last verse. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I know that after I die and I go to heaven that I'll be completely conformed to the image of Christ and I'll be wearing his likeness throughout eternity. Uh, one thing you notice throughout this psalm, Psalm 17, about words, the lips of the wicked and the lips of the righteous, and how we have to really be aware of our speech, if it's really pleasing unto the Lord, or are we just tearing down people? There's so much tearing down of people today, so much wicked speech, and we ought to have gracious speech, speech that comforts people, edifies people, encourages people, gives people hope and brings praise and honor to God that we have to be really careful with our speech and uh, I like that he, he says that in Psalm 17 I have called unto thee if thou will hear me O God I incline, incline thy ear unto me and hear my speech God hears our speech Hear my speech. So may, you know, whatever we say, we're accountable. We're accountable for, for not only our actions but our speech. So use our speech for the glory of God, for the well-being of our neighbors, and for our people that we love, our children, people that we work with. Here in BookTube, YouTube, may our speech be a blessing. So I hope you're having a good week. Do pray that you are not sick. Get vaccinated. Wear your mask. One thing that my wife was mentioning, that she, my wife is a retired nurse, but she's noticed from talking to her nurse friends who still are working, that since people have been wearing masks, people are not getting colds or respiratory disease. Uh, sickness. The hospitals, uh, we haven't gotten sick with colds since we've been wearing our mask. So I was telling my wife and I are, are going to keep wearing masks even after we are vaccinated <laughs> so we won't get any kind of colds. Anyway, hope you're having a good new week. Have a good reading week. Thank you for the comments. Do pray that you are well. And uh, until next time, bye.